I stayed in the decaying cabin for many nights, steeping in twilight and sleeping within caches of secreted darkness. I dreamed into the structure's cobwebbed corners and soft, rotting wood, hoping to record the impressions of the things that walked with me in sleep to be available for others who might be summoned to this place of old bones and secrets. It was that night that I had a very strange dream. I was one of countless wolves. We were silent, breathing warm fog into a cold black sky. We were waiting. We were starving. Suddenly, something was among us. In us. It entered us through the gates of our hunger, drawing us together, building a single ravening void out of the individual starving spaces we encompassed, until we all shared the same endless hunger. It was through this unified condition that the presence became us. Its memories raced through us like surging lightning, as its mind slowly surfaced from without our one great bottomless stomach. The entity began to compose our thoughts, weaving them together into a single and terrible storm of awareness. And when I was all but lost within its pounding rhythms, I glimpsed the nature of the thing I was becoming. I was as old as desire, taller than fear, colder than death. My voice was a sudden interrupted breath, and my name was the icy silence of conscience. I rose from the freezing earth as the sum of wolves, and moved into the shivering cities of man, striding into thick, warm crowds of terrified humanity. The air became so heavy with screams, I wondered if the world would ever breathe again. Having soaked up as much darkness as I was able, I abandoned the shack to the ghost of its past. As I wandered the woods, I eventually stumbled upon the faintest scratch of a road. I moved along the path and wondered about the names on the list. I couldn't help but speculate that the list was given to me by the Queen of the Dead World herself. I had, after all, just delivered one of her acolytes to the other side of sleep, returning to dream what was once stolen by flesh. Yet the whole thing seemed wholly out of fashion with the devices of her cold intents, as nothing within this silent calling felt like anything other than a warm and wonderful dream. So, I began to hunt with the dying sun bleeding across my face, feeling as if my body had become nearly weightless, leaving only the artist behind. Nothing but a dream of quiet knives and endless transformations. Strangely, amid a sprawling stand of trees, where the forest had nearly healed from the small worn path, there stood a nameless restaurant. I knew it as such by the rotting plaque that hung over its ramshackle door. Come in and try our daily special, it read. I had not yet eaten and found it to be a suitable place as any, and so I entered. As I ate my tasteless meal at the worn lunch counter, I withdrew one of the articles I found in the shack and scanned it. The title read, The Family Man Suspected in the Death of Nine. I had once let slip, to the artist I mentioned earlier, a small particle of my history. He was a kinetic bit of art, still breathing, in awe of what he had become, and supplied my admirers with the information I had imparted. Thus, my new name was born. While clearly I am more than the mere sum of my family's bones, though they do persist as my best works to date, I do rather enjoy the name. The next article I selected concerned a church that had been built three years ago by the given date. One of the carpenters who had contributed to the effort was named and circled. Hayden Trill. I generally don't do things in any particular order, but it was nice to see that he was the next person on my list. I knew, no, I felt, that the town with the church must be nearby, and so I packed up my family and left the nameless restaurant, 
stomach full, and mind abuzz with possibilities. When the town of Suttercraft came into view, I could see that it was in the process of being fed upon. Trees rose like stalks of towering fungus erupting from its spoiling flesh, and green waves of hungry woods had eaten away most of its roads and parking lots. Houses and businesses were hollow and broken. This place was merely a rotting trunk, and the people inhabiting it were no more than tomb worms. I quickly determined that the place would pose little threat to me, for it was already dead. The small town was not unknown to me. I'd heard of its penchant for producing strange black coffins from the churned earth of its planting fields, basements, and other deep places. I was also aware of the dreadful bodies that were removed from those coffins, looking much larger and fiercer in death than any human has ever in life. However, beneath all the chatter about caskets and corpses, there lurked an even more fantastic tale. According to certain dreamers, the souls of the deceased citizens of Suttercraft are reborn into those inhuman husks, and once returned to life, they must rise to take their place within some vast and wicked enterprise beneath the earth. Such stories, if at all true, give me hope that one day dreams won't be forced to hide behind sleep but might find their way upon the earth to do the good work of abolishing this dead world. I made my way through crooked streets, pinch tight alleyways, and sluggish fog, all of which lent the city an odd appearance of being either scribbled out or partially erased from the paper of time and space. I stopped momentarily, listening to church bells sound out the hour. They cushioned my thoughts with their overstuffed tones better allowing me to bridle my mind and focus on the task at hand. As I voyaged through the corpse town, my fascination with Hayden Trill began to swell. What weird and wonderful thing might result from killing him? I wouldn't normally work on a subject, lest the outcome was, in that spectacular but fleeting moment, the embodiment of a forgotten dream. But this calling felt like something more. It was as if I'd been invited to work on a much grander piece, in which Mr. Trill was merely a single, masterful brushstroke. I decided to take a moment to myself, and found a hospitable spread of shadows waiting for me beneath the arms of a willow tree. There I re-examined the mystery of Suttercraft. My thoughts burrowed deep into the town's soil, wandering into its pine-boxed secrets. How many had been laid to rest here? More importantly, how many were waiting to wake back up? Suddenly I was very curious as to the number of times I might be required to put down, so to speak, this mysterious Mr. Trill, and whether I should acquire a shovel to expedite the process 